Like a lot of arcade games, the first level of Metal Slug 1 is pathetically easy, likely to make sure you get at least some worth out of your quarter and to get you invested before pulling the rug out from under you. So instead I'll go over some of the basics. Firstly, crouching is extremely useful for avoiding bullets and is safer than jumping. Secondly, you can use bombs while in the slug by crouching in it. Thirdly, you get iframes when entering, but more importantly when exiting the Metal Slug. This is most abusable in Metal Slug 1 because of the history of the game. Originally, you only played as the Slug, no Marco, no Tarma, which is in line with the dev's previous game, In the Hunt, where you only played as a submarine, but then they changed their minds due to feedback and added in the boys. But still had a game design around playing as a goddamn tank, so they made it available on every level despite the fact that it's being, you know, it's pretty overpowered when exploited, you know, just don't blow it up by trying to jump while shooting and accidentally inputting the fucking self-destruct combination. Why is the self-destruct button tied to jumping while shooting? Well, I have no fucking idea. Oh hey, it's the first boss. Oh, there he goes. Okay, mission two. Mission two. Mission two, another easy one. You can safely ignore the weapons these first two boats drop, but grab the shotgun makes quick work of the upcoming mini boss. Again, you're going to want to try and take out these soldiers as you move by with suppressive fire. Same goes for the planes. This boss is quite straightforward. The slug's cannon explosion actually has a very vertical hitbox to it once it hits the ground. So you'll still catch the plane with it even if you miss. Mission. Three. Okay, so by mission three, you've had fun, it's time for SNK to make some money, and they're gonna make money off here by introducing platforming. Platforming with metal slug jumping. Mm, not, not, not the best. As for this out of play story, you might think the best course of action is to, you know, play it carefully, but I find it's quicker to just go for it and pray a heavy machine gun drops to deal with the upcoming boss. Because Alan O'Neill is a motherfucker, but is very manageable. Just camp out on the top right, and if he moves his diagonal line of fire into you, just, just walk past it. You can try and snipe him with some bombs while you're up here, but that shouldn't be necessary. The rest of the level after Alan isn't really a problem as long as you know what to expect. In fact, he's far more challenging than the actual boss because despite being a big intimidating tank looking thing, we have our own tank and, and bombs and lots of bombs. Mission 4. Mission 4 starts off with a bit of a mean trick. If you shoot the big red barrel, you don't get the metal slug. On the other hand, if you don't shoot the big red barrel, you get the metal slug for the entire level, which turns it into a cakewalk since you can just mow everything down with cannon fire. The boss shouldn't be too hard, just make sure to stockpile grenades and throw it at the upper one. That'll take him out in like two seconds. Then the second one can safely be taken out at your own pace using cannon fire. Mission 5. Okay, so here's a quick rule of thumb. Don't go over something if you can go through it. The designers have started placing snipers to catch you out if you try and go over these cars like a weirdo, so instead we're just going to shoot the cars and advance through the level slowly and carefully. Until we get to the slug, of course. Next we'll want grenades, not cannon ammo, so get out of the slug, grab the bombs, crush the cars, jump over the rockets, grenade spam the blockade so we don't have to deal with the flank attack, reach the boss, realize you can't really hurt you if you abuse the slug's iframes, and then win. Mission Six. This level predictably contains the most difficult parts of the game, but it's still nothing compared to the final missions of the following games. It's actually quaint how relatively short and straightforward it is going back. After this opening firefight, you can get a flamethrower, but the pistol's range and rate of fire is actually more useful for the upcoming bridge section, which for the record is the most difficult part of the game to get through consistently. I don't have a foolproof strategy for it either, or rather the lack of a foolproof strategy is what makes this so difficult, which will be a recurring sentiment. Even the most seemingly difficult segments in 2 and 3 can be neutered with the right tactics, and the exceptions to that are what become the real run-enders. As for this bridge, well, your best bet is to take the lower route, blow up the barrels and then focus on the grunts before destroying the tank. Afterwards, advance slowly to take out everything one at a time. Once you reach the end, you want to prioritize the rightmost guy, twice, and these bike guys. Afterwards, the biggest threat will be the grunts throwing grenades at you, because the tank's cannon fire can be avoided by staying close enough to it. If you make it through that gauntlet, you'll probably be set for the 1cc. The boat gives you a turret to make use of, which can be dismounted for iframes just like the metal slug. Speaking of, the designers must have been really proud of that trick they pulled in mission 4, so they do it again here. Huh? Just don't blow up the barrel and you'll get your slug. Although you'll want to take out this guy with a bomb first. Now that we have the slug, it's just a matter of conserving its health and collecting as much ammo as possible for the final boss, which is a transport helicopter. You can see why they might have upped the spectacle going forward. Regardless, it has three attacks, well actually four, but don't worry about it, each of which there's a specific counter to. But first, let's open the fight with some grenade spam. It's a bit risky, but it's worth it if you have the health to spare. Afterwards, you want to position yourself in the stairs diagonally and then sit here for the rest of the fight. That's it. By aiming at him from here, you'll destroy his primary rocket attacks automatically. His homing rockets, on the other hand, can be countered with your cannon. Just keep firing it until the rockets are destroyed. His last attack, the aerial bombardment, can be countered just by ejecting. Just keep responding to each attack with the appropriate counter and the fight will be over before you know it. Just uh, don't lose the slug or else you're fucked. And a nice ball, you stupid bitch. Metal Slug 1 is by far the easiest game of the first three and my least favourite. There's nothing wrong with it, but I prefer the direction the later games took. Since the first game was going for a somewhat grounded World War II setting, the enemy designs were relatively restrained. There was nothing too creative design-wise, since Metal Slug wasn't really supposed to be science fiction. Yet. Yeah. 
So where do you go after Nazis? Well, aliens, apparently. But not just aliens, anything fantastical and unrealistic was now on the table for the designers. Mummies, mechas, laser guns, women in combat. Unfortunately, they forgot to make sure the game actually ran properly, so it has an unbearable amount of slowdown. This was fixed in the re-release, Metal Slug X, but like all good remakes, they also went in and made a bunch of unnecessary changes, including, but not limited to, level palettes, improved movement, enemy placement, vehicle placement, boss recycling, new weapons, improved versions of existing weapons. <sighs> but ultimately, I prefer the original since it's easier. I mean, better balanced. Since you can pick your character this time, you should know that the guys actually operate cranks faster than the girls. But, uh, who cares? Theo! Mission 1. Start! Mission 1 is you hunt down the current majority shareholders of SNK to stop them from making all those fucking mobile games. To do so, we will commandeer a camel which has no cannon and offers no protection but can still self-destruct for some reason. Mission 2! Mission 2 starts you off on the camel, assuming it survived, which means you get an entire level with it, right? Wrong. This time the game wasn't designed around the slug, so the devs weren't so laissez-faire about letting you steamroll the levels with its vehicles. Like this stupid thing it gives you for the boss fight and appears nowhere else in the game. Now there's an exploit that lets you enter a safe spot by dropping off the sledge, however the boss is so easy anyways I rarely bother with it. Mission 3! Railways are a man's passion. Mission 3 is probably the best music in the game and takes place on a train, making it the coolest level by default. The first chunk of it can be safely rushed through, but these airboats can be an issue if they double up on you, so I like to spawn camp the right most one. The upcoming gap actually gives you points for taking the riskiest possible jump for some reason, so of course we're going to be getting zero points. Contrary to the first part of the level, I recommend taking this part slowly and making use of bombs to take out the gunners behind cover. Then the game gives you a jet, whose best feature isn't actually the fact that it can fly, but that it can strafe. Keep firing at the bottom of the screen as you advance to clear out the incoming grunts and you'll make it to the boss, which feels a bit like a shmup boss now that we're flying. Except unlike a shmup, our hitbox actually reflects the size of our sprite. If you suck at shmups like me, then you'll be happy to know that all of this boss's attacks can be dodged just by flying underneath it, unless it lowers itself, in which case, yeah, you can actually have to dodge that shit. But don't worry, when your jet gets destroyed, I mean if your jet gets destroyed, the boss will actually become easier because on foot, you can just jump onto the boss and duck onto the gunfire. Mission four. Was that Beijing? Start! I'm gonna skip over the deep lore on this guy and move straight into the level, okay? Okay. Shoot the cars, shoot the building, grab the bombs, shoot the bus, skip the rocket launcher, shoot the other things, yeah, yeah, yeah. You finally get a metal slug, which means you can just rush through the next part of the level. I like to take it slowly and use grenades on the tanks and then shoot at this guy from out of frame. But this next boss is a real doozy. The first phase is easy enough, but once it takes up the mega cannon, then you kinda wanna back off and then just camp out on the left, jump over his cannon shots and that'll propel you upwards and you can return fire with your own cannon. Mission five. Mission 5 is when the game starts getting difficult and contains one of the most justifiable reasons to use auto fire I've ever seen. But first, we need to scrap some cars and then get blitzkrieged by some choppers. They're a lot easier to manage than they first appear. The grunts that continually spawn in as you fight them are the bigger threat, honestly. So you should always be firing off a few shots to catch them as they spawn in. You can also kill the choppers pretty much immediately as they spawn in with bombs, but it's not really necessary yet. Advance slowly to methodically kill everything that spawns in and eventually you'll make it to the end of this stretch. It's time for the second biggest fuck you moment in the game. When the devs decide to start throwing subway cars at you and your only recourse is shooting at them again and again and again. But since I use turbo, the challenge of this section is all but removed. But since I use turbo, I use turbo, I use turbo. You cheated not only the game, but yourself. You didn't grow. You didn't improve. You took a shortcut and gained nothing. You experienced a hollow victory. Nothing was risked, and nothing was gained. In between the first and second subways, a tank will spawn in, so position yourself to the left of the screen before firing to take out everything with a continuous volley to the right. Then the choppers will make their return. It's easy for this to turn into some idiot doom spiral if you let them pile up, so use bombs to take them out as they spawn in. But I like to keep a few bombs left over for the following tank. If you don't kill this tank quickly, another will spawn behind you, and then it gets kind of tricky. So try and take out the first one ASAP to position yourself to the right of the screen and then mop up. Now it's time for more subway cars. The fourth car will have grunts spawn behind you and then immediately throw grenades, so try to proactively fire off a few shots as they spawn in. The last car actually drops a laser gun, which you can grab if you didn't fucking completely forget about it. Moving on, you're gonna want to use these cranks to grab the laser and then make a beeline for the gates while carefully crowd controlling the Omega Coomers. Or you can be like me and just waste all your bombs on them instead of the upcoming boss, making it twice as hard as it needs to be. In general, try not to be directly above it when it begins an attack or you won't have enough distance to avoid them. So far, Metal Slug 2 has had a pretty smooth difficulty curve. Bomb beat. Final mission! Start! Well, it's time to step it up. Even the very first screen is one of the most difficult to survive consistently unless you cheese it. Look, if the game is done playing fair, then so am I. Well, actually, I never played fair, but whatever. First, bomb this guy and then jump forward to reveal the bunker to the right, then return to the left and shoot it from a distance. With that down, it's easy to move in and clear out the enemies there. Take out this enemy to the right if you want and then save the invisible POW for bombs that, if all goes according to plan, will be used on the final boss. For now, though, we're stuck platforming through rockets. Yeah, platforming in Metal Slug, here we go. 
Pro tip for the timing here, jump as if you're trying to hit your head onto the flame of the previous rocket. Trust me, you won't. Methodically take out the grunts here and then rescue another POW by shooting this signpost. I like to let him come to me so that I don't load in the next section, the bridge. It makes the timing easier. Now there's no real strategy to get past this part flawlessly, so just pray. The best advice I can give is to move on to the bridge during the highway if that seems to help, and uh, just go as fast as possible. If you kill the enemies quickly enough, they won't have time to get off their attacks. Survive that and you'll be greeted to the trickiest boss of the first game, again, but this time, you have no weapon, and he has ads. Come on, even Metal Slug X gave you a weapon for this part, so you know they went overboard here. The strategy remains the same, except you throw down bombs on the regular to take out any soldiers that get too close. After you've definitely won that fight without dying, you get your first weapon drop of the level, which you will then waste all of its ammo on destroying these bunkers from a distance again and again. After that, it's a straight shot to the next area. Destroy these boxes for more bombs and make sure you cap this guy and this guy. I like how the aliens are only revealed at the 11th hour here, rather than in the first fucking level in X. Try to cover your flanks while destroying these boxes and grab the flamethrower ASAP to deal with the tanks, but uh, use up the rest of the ammo before moving on because the pistol's range and rate of fire is more, more useful, useful for the upcoming section, which consists mostly of just crouching in the corner and shooting. You see, you'll melee the aliens bullets before they can hit you if you're crouching, so they really can't touch you as long as you're patient and don't get swarmed from behind. As a result, this final gauntlet is just kinda boring. Still easy to die though. Now, <clears throat> this boss fight broke me. Remember when I said the subway cars were the second most bullshit thing in the game? Well, you're looking at number one. The most inconsistent and difficult part of this game is the final boss, and how much you struggle is going to depend on RNG because of these guys. The first phase will spawn in several little UFOs that you can take out with a grenade, or one UFO that takes three grenades, and these UFOs can drop laser guns, which is what you want. Unfortunately, they can also not drop laser guns, like at all, in which case you're kind of fucked, because you need the damage the laser gives you to crowd control the UFOs in the second phase, which are much stronger. You can take them out with grenades if you're desperate, but it's a lot more difficult. Ideally, you want to grab a few laser guns in the first phase, conserve them by finishing off the first phase with grenades that you've stockpiled, go into the second phase with a large stock of laser, and use it to crowd control the black UFOs up until Metal Slug 2 spawns. Then, it's a matter of getting the slug up here in one piece. Once you're here, you've basically won, because now you can take out the UFOs as they spawn in with a jumping cannon shot. Have a nice fall, you stupid bitch! <laughs> What we need is a game that's more consistently difficult, one with bullet sponge enemies and bosses and half the game is an auto-scroller and the other half is the final level. Oh, here we go, now we're talking. Mission 1, start! This first level is going to set the tone for the game quite nicely as it features two of the most iconic things about Metal Slug 3. Bloated enemy health pools and the importance of routing. We went from enemies that die in one hit in the previous game's first missions to these fucking crabs which take like a dozen hits to go down. And the boss this level can either be surprisingly challenging or a complete pushover depending on the route you take. These two factors will extend all the way from this first level to the last one and can turn the game into a total slog if you don't know what you're doing. That's why we're going to be taking a set route through the game and ignoring all the other options. If you want to see them, play it yourself. As for mission 1, skip the submarine, take the boat instead. Then grab the metal slug in the box, which has the incredible ability to move right and aim left. Mission 2! The game's difficulty ramps up right away in 3. There's several tricky parts to this level and the boss is no joke. Okay, now take what I just said about this level and apply it to the rest of the game from now on, because that's what we're dealing with. Since Metal Slug 3 uses X's improved engine, crouching while firing has a slightly faster rate of fire, which you will want to make use of against these bullet sponge zombies. Everything's pretty straightforward until we get to this enemy chaser. We'll want to conserve this, so take out these soldiers with melee as much as you can. Killing the red chopper won't cause a chain reaction unless the rest of the choppers are loaded in, so don't kill it prematurely. Try and get it on the second pass around. The follow-up copters drop a flamethrower on heavy machine gun. I recommend the flamethrower. Jump the tank and take it out from behind. Be careful not to stand too close to these things when destroying them as they spawn in a zombie who will immediately zombify you, which, while cool, is not ideal. What is ideal is the rocket launcher the chopper drops. We want to conserve this for the boss, along with our entire bomb stockpile. These guys get stronger the less of them there are, so it's best to take them all out at once with grenade spam while it's doing its big spin move. Then, a far easier phase starts, which isn't even worth talking about. Mission three. You want to dip into this tube here to take the submarine route, and since it's so hidden, I'll let you know that the ostrich route is up here. Afterwards, we get a stealth sort of section, I guess. Most of this is very straightforward, but this screen right here is a massive problem, at least for me. 
The main thing you want to do here is just make heavy use of grenades against these guys on this level because otherwise it's very easy to lose a life. Then we get a robot suit which will be very useful on the boss so try and keep it alive. Another thing we'll need is this shotgun that this guy gives you. Between the ejection iframes of the robot suit and the DPS of the shotgun, the boss will go down without a hassle. I like to use the robot's machine gun to shoot down or at least tank the homing rockets though. Really intense giant freaking drill. It could pulp you. Pretty cool. The camel is back by unpopular demand, but you'll want to dismount it once you reach the second truck and take it out from a distance. Destroying the chopper will cause two more to spawn in, so save it for last. There's a special POW hidden here that fights alongside you with fireballs. Now he's not particularly effective, but I find the upcoming stretch pretty tricky, so any help is appreciated, I guess. Rushing through and taking your time are equally viable here. I prefer to take it slowly though, and make use of grenades since they won't be useful for the boss this time around. Take the lower route and use the crank to open the chute and go in. These maggot fellas aren't really a risk as long as you keep meleeing them, so just move forward and grab the shotgun, which we will want for this level's boss, so conserve ammo as much as possible by making use of grenades. But this big crab can easily deck you and take a life off you if you don't take it seriously. The driller segment is very straightforward. Use the drill on the big worms. Some of them take more hits than others, don't worry about it. Don't grab any of the POW weapon pickups since we want to keep the shotgun for the boss. Speaking of, this boss is probably the most difficult boss in the game because of this one attack. There's no real strategy to avoiding it. I like to just stand underneath them and watch the bullets as they load in, and then try to react to their trajectory ahead of time. His other attacks are easy to avoid. Walk to the other side of the arena, walk back and forth, walk and then jump. You kinda just want to get lucky and hope he doesn't use his yellow attack too often. Final what mission! Start! Now, I know what you're thinking. Metal Slug 3 only has 5 missions? This is an outrage. Well, if you're worried about the lack of content, you'll be happy to know that this final mission is longer than the entirety of the game up until this point. The level starts with an auto-scrolling shmup segment, because of fucking course it does. This is Metal Slug 3, remember? Half the game is a shmup. You have the choice of using the jet, which can strafe, and the helicopter, which can't. And in two-player is the equivalent of the knockoff controller you'd give your little brother. For the sky section, stick to the top left, and once you go into the forest, stick to the bottom left. Here, you'll have the opportunity to acquire some bombs, and I'd recommend grabbing them as grenades rather than vehicle ammo. Remember, this is already the final mission. You'll be bringing these bombs all the way to the final boss. Also, if your vehicle is low on health coming up to the end of this segment, you can sack it and receive a fresh whirly bird to replace it. This recycled boss is pretty simple. For the second phase, I like to just move back and forth underneath it in between the thrown bombs. Now, if you lose your vehicle rather than trying to kill the boss with the pistol, play defensively and wait for a bug to spawn along the bottom of the screen, and then kill that for a weapon. With recycled boss 1 down, it's on to recycled boss 2. It wasn't that hard the first time, and now we have a turret to make use of instead of a slug, so it's even easier, really. Have a nice ball, you stupid. <sighs> Man, remember when this game wasn't a shmup? Yeah, me neither. This leads us on to the third recycled boss, and it turns out UFOs aren't that hard to take down when you've got your own spaceship. Speaking of, while I don't have much advice to give for this section since it's pretty straightforward and it's just a matter of getting good, one thing I didn't know when I first once you see the game, and well, the only time I once you see the game, was that holding down jump causes your ship to move around faster. Just don't, uh, you know. Alright, finally, we're back actually playing Metal Slug. These robots are only really a threat if they double up on you, which will happen if you don't have the flame shot. So you need to be conservative with it against these aliens and then use it on the robots before switching over to the rocket launcher. Now, if you want to get tricksy, you can jump up here and save this hidden guy for some bombs. But you'll need to kill these aliens before destroying the door to get up there, so I don't bother. This hallway is a nightmare and probably the least consistent part of the game for me, especially towards the end. Either run past or shoot down all the little spiders until you reach the first big one. To deal with these big guys, plant yourself right next to the drop point of his bubble attacks so that they bounce right over you, and alternate between fire between the big guy and the little guys that spawn in. Once he dies, his body will collapse and kill you if you're caught underneath it, so we want to make sure your killing shot doesn't land while you're trapped by a lingering bubble attack. Afterwards, advance slowly while taking out the piters and then kill this brain bot who will drop a mobile satellite. Mobile satellite. Sorry, mobile satellite. It trails you from above and fires when you shoot, but you'll want to carry it forward without using up any of its ammo because the next big piter won't stay in place like the first one, unless you physically block its movements with the mobile satellite. With him locked in place, you can take him out just like the first one. Then comes the worst part, where you have to make a mad dash for this door that you need to shoot down, while the piters try to self-destruct on you. You can try and speed max here by just continually jumping and firing at any piters that get underneath you, or walk the distance and only jump to evade the explosions. Once you get to the door, you can either hunker down and pry it open with gunfire while fending off the piters, or dip into your bomb stockpile just to rush it. This next boss has surprisingly little health, for Metal Slug 3 at least, so it's relatively easy to wing it, but I like to start the fight by moving over to the left, jumping over the first shot, and then running the length of the arena. You see there are weapons stored under the floorboards here, which will then come out if they're hit by the boss's attack. Once he starts using his big shot, you'll want to keep your dodging nice and compact to give yourself more space to work with. Once you're forced near the edge of the arena, try having him fire his shot into the slopes so that it's easier to jump over. After the Holy shit, is that a Metal Slug Free Super Vehicle? But now we can just blow the shit out of everything with cannon fire and iframe through anything dangerous. Hey wait, where are we going? We're not done here! 
Before you start attacking this boss, you want to move over to the right and grind some heavy machine gun ammo. Then position yourself on the left and open fire. You're almost completely safe here, save for if a clone stands right here, in which case you'll need to jump over his flame shot. Alright, home stretch. You're being chased by zombies who have an effectively undodgeable attack, and you'll need to keep cover between the two of you to hide behind. Rush the first barrier and take it out. Then advance and take out the collapsed zombies. The third one drops some bombs, so crowd control the advancing zombies while you wait for them to drop. After the second barrier, shoot the four zombies and grab the flame shot. Rather than try to avoid these shotgun clones, you should do the opposite and instead get closer to them, because if you're in their melee range, they can't hurt you. Move forward slowly to reveal the third barrier's targets, but no farther. Go too far and zombies will start spawning. Destroy the barrier from a distance, then allow the zombies to spawn. My strategy here is slow and boring, but safer than the alternative. You see zombies spawn in waves of 8, so when they start to spawn in, I move over to the left, shoot down the 8 of them, and then move on. Then I have some breathing room before they start spawning again. I move forward just enough to partially reveal these robots, and then shoot at them from a distance. Then it's a back and forth between culling the zombies, sniping the robots, culling the zombies, sniping the robots. For God's sake, don't get the fucking drop shot, just let it despawn. Once you reach the final barrier, you can switch over to using your walking bombs to take out the zombies and focus your guns on the targets. You can even, and I, and I can't believe it, you can even actually use your self-destruct to destroy the two targets. It finally serves a purpose. And with that, you can escape the mothership. Root Mars has two attacks, a shockwave that you dodge vertically and some balls that you dodge horizontally, or you can just use the slug's iframes to go right through them. You can also just sort of stand here and avoid the shockwave somehow. Your pattern should go like this, stand here and fire at the brain while keeping an eye on its mouth. Once it starts shooting projectiles, retreat to the slug and eject to evade through the balls. That's it really. If you rely solely on the weapons and bombs you brought to the fight, you'll probably drag it out to the point where you'll slip up and die, so it's important to shoot these red balls since they can drop weapons and bombs. Ideally, you want to use your cannon while in the slug, which, if timed right and with the right pattern, will destroy the red ball for you. Keeping your slug alive is also key. If you have to choose between your slug taking a hit and you losing a life, sack the life, because trying to dodge these balls manually is not worth it. This boss isn't too hard with a bit of practice. For comparison, I'd say I'd lost maybe a dozen attempts at the 1cc to 2's final boss, and I think I only ever lost like 1 or 2 1cc attempts to 3's. It's more so about controlling your nerves at this point in the run. Yeah, piece of cake.